Yeah, so my name's Emily Priest, or otherwise known as Emily the Writer, and I'm a performance poet in Portsmouth. I got involved with trash arts when I first moved here for university in about 2016. Um, seems like ages ago now. Um, but I first got involved um, at, when it was down at the Fat Fox. Um, I kind of went on a whim and then found that the crowd was really welcoming and I really enjoyed it. So I started getting more and more involved and that was really the moment that I developed myself as a performance poet and started branching out a bit more. So my style is, um, I like to say depressive poet. Um, it's not the most, the most um, biggest selling point, but I like to look at love and loss um, a lot. I like to tackle grief and suicide and mental health in my poetry. Um, it's very cathartic, it's, it's how I um, alleviate stresses. And huge inspirations of mine was like Holly McNeish or Kate Tempest, um, Sabrina Benaim, who's an American poet as well. Uh, a lot of female poets as well, and Rupi Kaur, who's also brilliant. It's, they inspired me to be vulnerable and to share those social issues and to help people as well and to not feel afraid to open up in front of people when I'm performing. I went to New York last year in 2018 and I was in a bit of a rough time. Um, it was for my birthday and I went to the New Yorkan Poet Cafe. It, um, it's near, near the bottom of Manhattan and that is essentially the Beats Poets Cafe. So a lot of my inspirations such as Ginsberg or Bukowski or Burroughs, about 1960s, they, they all hung out there and shared stories and I went to an open mic there and performed one of my hardest and most vulnerable poems about suicide. And not only was I in a spot where all of my inspirations had been, but the crowd response I got was absolutely incredible. And it was amazing to be, to be welcomed by people like that when you are being so vulnerable. So yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. <laughs> Best audience response? I mean, I think there's two. I think everybody wants, you know, uh, a standing ovation and an, an applaud, and that's great, but in an ideal world, I want people to actually just think. I want people to stop or to be, to be shocked by my poetry because then you know they've taken it in. They're not clapping because you've ended the performance. They're clapping because they've appreciated it. They, they understand what you're, what you're talking about, and I think that's the point of my poetry. Because poetry helps me, I want it to help other people. So if somebody is in the audience, rather than clapping, but taking it in and thinking about my words and finding inspiration in that, I think that's the biggest response that I want. That would be the best thing. <laughs> so there's many things that are important to me as, as, a, as a poet. I think um, support from other creators is important and awareness and promotion. And, and just that collective and that, that community and that family that you get. But I think what's more important to me than that is honesty. I think when other people are honest with me or if artists are honest in their work, they, they truly hone into their craft and they create some incredible pieces. Um, and I'm not just talking about poetry as well, I'm talking about music as well and film and art. When you're honest in what you do, you create the true emotional truth that you want to convey. You, you allow yourself to be vulnerable, and I think there's a certain beauty and vulnerability that we need to share, and that is what mo is most important to me, yeah. I am not a victim or a survivor. It was no war or earthquake that shook me, no. It was just a boy who wished to be a man but did not know how. So he dirted his hands, not with sweat, but with me, and took what he wanted so effortlessly, but it was no shooting. Even if the hurt and agony tore through me like bullets, he was not as powerful as a gun or a bomb. No. You see, he was just human, like you or me, and I don't need to survive something that weak. <laughs>